the unconscious simply contains great portions of your own experience in which you have been taught not to believe. Again, your conscious mind is meant to look into the exterior world and into the interior one. The conscious mind is a vehicle for the expression of the soul in corporeal terms. It is your method of assessing temporal experience according to the beliefs that it holds about the nature of reality. It automatically causes the body to react in certain ways. I cannot say this often enough. Your beliefs form your reality. Your body in its condition, your personal relationships, your environment, and in mass, your civilization and world. Your beliefs automatically attract the appropriate emotions. They reinforce themselves through imagination and at the risk of repeating myself because this is so important, imagination and feeling follow your beliefs. It is not the other way around. If now a brief innocuous enough example you meet an individual often enough and think he gives me a pain in the neck it is surely no coincidence that you find yourself with a painful neck in future encounters with this person the suggestion is quite a conscious one however empathetically given by yourself and carried out not symbolically but most practically most literally in other words the conscious mind gives its orders and the inner self carries them out. In this existence, you are physically oriented. Surely then, the conscious, physically oriented mind is the one that is meant to make deductions about the nature of physical reality. Otherwise, you would have no free will. In Western culture, since the Industrial Revolution after about 1760, the idea grew that there was little connection between the objects in the world and the individual. Now, this is not a history book, so I will not go into the reasons behind this idea, but will merely mention that it was an overreaction in your terms at the least to previous religious concepts. Before that time, man did believe that he could affect matter and the environment through his thoughts. With the Industrial Revolution, however, even the elements of nature lost their living quality in man's eyes. They became objects to be categorized, named, torn apart, and examined. You do not dissect a pet cat or dog, so when man began to dissect the universe in those terms he had already lost his sense of love for it it became soulless for him only then could he examine it you see without qualm and without being aware of the living voice that protested and so in his great fascination for what made things work in his great curiosity to understand the heredity of a flower say he forgot what he could also learn by smelling a flower, looking at it, watching it be itself. So he examined dead nature. Often he had to kill life in order, he thought, to discover its reality. You cannot understand what makes things live when you must first rob their life. And so, when man learned to categorize, number, and dissect nature, he lost its living quality and no longer felt a part of it. To some important extent, he denied his heritage. For spirit is born into nature and the soul, and for a time, resides in flesh. Man's thoughts no longer seemed to have any effect upon nature 
because in his mind, he saw himself apart from it. In an ambiguous fashion, while concentrating upon nature's exterior aspects in a very conscious manner, he still ended up denying the conscious powers of his own mind. He became blind to the connection between his own thoughts and his physical environment and experience. This is the end of part nine of Seth Speaks, The Nature of Personal Reality. Let's chit chat about it. This is a loaded one. In this passage, Seth is conveying several key ideas. The unconscious contains parts of your own experience that you've been taught not to believe in. And your conscious mind is meant to explore both the external and internal worlds. Your conscious mind assesses temporal experiences based on your beliefs, which automatically influence your body's reactions. Seth emphasizes that your beliefs shape your reality, your body's condition, your relationships, your environment, and even the broader civilization and the world. Imagination and feelings follow your beliefs, not the other way around. What you believe affects how you imagine things and how you feel about them. Seth provides an example where your conscious thoughts can influence physical experiences such as developing a physical pain in response to consistently thinking negatively about a specific person. It is important to remember that the conscious mind is crucial for making deductions about the nature of physical reality and exercising free will. Seth also touches on the historical shift, particularly uh, during the Industrial Revolution when people began to see objects in the world as disconnected from themselves. This shift resulted in a loss of love and appreciation for nature, as well as a reduction in the belief that thoughts could affect the physical world. People began to dissect and categorize nature without understanding its living qualities. Ultimately, man's growing focus on the external aspects of nature led to a disconnection between his thoughts and the physical environment, denying the conscious powers of the mind. This resulted in a blindness to the connection between thoughts and one's physical experiences. If you've enjoyed this reading, please consider giving it a like, sharing with a friend, and subscribing for more. What did you think about this particular passage? Leave it in the comments below. Until the next time, I'd like to thank you for watching. Thank you for listening. I'm Tony Victory, a wolf uncaged. Thank you.